Okay, uh, first of all, if you need SPSS, so uh, I brought uh, two versions, SPSS 17 and 22, so if you like, you can take uh, these uh, DVDs and please uh, take it back uh, next week, but it's for you. Uh, the second announcement should be that it seems uh, that everything is okay and uh, all lectures are already uh, at uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, this is channel of uh, Institute of Sociological Studies, so in Czech, Institute Sociologických Studi. Uh, so if you write it, uh, you should find it. Uh, if not, uh, write me an email and I will send you the link. Uh, uh, I've also uploaded uh, the next uh, presentation and I hope that I went through nearly all your homework, so uh, table should be updated uh, at the uh, student information system. So, first of all, if you uh, <coughs> didn't download, uh, so please download from Student Information System uh, the fourth presentation. And uh, I think uh, we can start, so I will find my materials. And maybe first of all, let's try to run uh, IBM SPSS statistic uh, 21. So this will be the first step to be sure that we have all uh, the same software which will be correctly functioning. So if you go into oh, all programs, or in Czech, it's všechny programy. Then try to find uh, the folder which is called IBM SPSS statistics. And then the third step is to find IBM SPSS statistics version 21. And if you click on it, it should open IBM SPSS 21, which is correctly functioning at this lab. So, and if you do not have data, so you can use uh, internet browser and uh, write Samba, and then my login, S-O-U-K-P-6-A-S. S-O-U-K-P-6-A-S. And then I hope you will be able to find my web page. Oh, it's not functioning once again. It's impossible. So once again, hello. So I will send you the link once again, excuse me. Or is there anybody who needs the link? Uh, for data. Yeah, okay, so I will manage it.
So you should find the link uh, in your email for data and other materials. Excuse me for this inconvenience, but I don't know uh, why uh, my web page is still not uh, fully functional. And uh, data uh, we will use once again are data called uh, ISSP 99CZ short SAV. And you can also download, as we will also use it uh, for today's lecture, UBS99CZ.SAV uh, uh, data file. So these two data files we will use for this lecture once again. And first of all, please open data which are shorter. It means ISSP99CZ uh, short SAV, the first file we have used previously during our lectures. And if I do remember well, so last time, we discussed uh, variance and standard deviation. Am I right or not? Yeah? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And also this one, UBS 99, for the next analysis. Uh, am I right uh, that we discussed last time variance and standard deviation as the last topic? Yeah? Okay, 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 okay. So, today, we will go further and we will discuss about skewness and kurtosis and then about uh, data transformations. So, first of all, what does it mean skewness? So I think you understand what does it mean if something is skewed. And uh, skewness uh, in statistics is of course some measure which try to measure the shape of distribution. So it answers the question whether the distribution is symmetric or not. So we can have at least three basic ideal examples. So for example, this distribution is symmetric. So there is no skewness at all. This distribution with quite big peak on the left side and quite long tail on the right side is skewed to the left, and we can have also opposite situation or something like this picture. And, of course, we can recognize whether our distribution is symmetric or not, whether it is uh, uh, <coughs> skewed or not, uh, according to the measure which is called skewness. Uh, so, uh, we can have some formula so it's quite easy, so I will write it uh, for you. So if you like uh, to compute uh, skewness, so the formula would be uh, following. You will <coughs> take variance, which was defined uh, last time, and then you will take, excuse me, not one half, but one divided by number of respondents. And then you will uh, take uh, differences between individual values and average. And these will be is the third power. So the third power of these differences and one divided uh, by number of respondents divided by uh, variance and once again definition for uh, variance is following. You will take individual differences between individual values and mean squared divided by number of respondents. So this is the denominator here and uh, that's the denominator. So this is formula for skewness and now we should decide what will be the value 
of skewness for this picture, this picture, this picture, and then you will be able, if you will only see, okay, skewness for this distribution is, for example, minus two, to recognize whether this pattern or this pattern or this pattern is applied. So let's start with the simplest case, this one, which is symmetric distribution. So somewhere in the middle we can find average, and uh, <coughs> there is the same quantity of values above average and below average. So if you try to think about it, so differences between individual value and average, uh, third power, if you take from these values, so some of these differences will be positive, some of these will be negative. And the quantity of positive and negative differences are all the same. So if you make the sum of all these differences, and doesn't matter if it is third power, it will cancel out and it will be zero divided by some variance. So for this case, skewness is zero. So if you find that skewness is zero or close to zero, so your distribution is symmetrical as this one. And now we have to distinguish between these two cases and it's quite easy to guess that one of these distribution will be followed by negative and one with positive skewness. And only we have to say which one is positive and which one is negative. So let's try once again to imagine. You make differences between individual values and the average and then make third power. So if you, for example, have average here or for this data approximately here, so for this distribution with quite long tail on the right side and big peak on the left side. So you take quite small negative differences and you make the third power. So it will be still quite small figure at all. But you take quite big one, positive differences, and if you make the third power, it is even bigger. So you take quite big positive quantity minus quite small negative quantity. So the result will be positive and it's easy to guess that skewness will be also positive for this picture. And I think that similar proof we can follow for this case and it will tell me, okay, skewness for this distribution with big peak on the right side and uh, quite long tail on the left side is negative. So zero plus or minus means these pictures are present in our data approximately. Is it clear? Yeah? So we are only measuring symmetry? Yeah, by skewness we are measuring symmetry. If you remember previous discussion, so first of all, we try to measure something in the middle, some representative. So it was, for example, average. Then we try to measure uh, the variance. It means whether individual values are very quite a lot or few. And now we are measuring symmetry by skewness. And the next measurement, and of course then we will uh, do some computations uh, in uh, SPSS. Uh, next uh, measurement is uh, called kurtosis and it measures whether there is a big peak or small peak, we can say, uh, in our data. So once again, some pictures. So now I will use only one picture with three uh, possible curves. So the first one, for example, like model, then we will have some quite flat distribution. And the last color I can use quite big peak for the distribution. So, kurtosis measure the peak of this distribution, whether it is big or small. We use two expressions for two extremes. For flat distributions, we use usual expression that this distribution is platycurtic. 
but of course you can say it has low kurtosis or it is flat distribution, it's up to to this side. But if you like uh, to play the game, you are a statistician, let's say it's platycurtic. If there is big peak, it's leptocurtic distribution. And once again, of course, we should have some formula and decide how to measure kurtosis and how to decide whether our distribution is normal, platycurtic or leptocurtic. So, uh, excuse me, there was one mistake in previous uh, equation. Uh, this one uh, should be uh, the power of uh, three and a half. Excuse me, that was mistake in previous formula. And now we will add formula for kurtosis. So, formula for kurtosis is nearly the same, only instead of the third power, we use the fourth power. And here we use second power. So it's the fourth power of differences between individual values and average. Some for all these individual differences uh, and uh, divided by number of respondents and variance squared. And variance, of course, once again, the same formula as previously. And it can be proven uh, quite easily uh, that uh, the higher the peak, the higher the skewness. So these values will be usually positive. For this one, quite flat distribution, it will be negative. Uh, Excuse me for colors, uh, this should be green. So this is positive, negative, and this one will be approximately zero. So if you have symmetrical distribution and you compute kurtosis, and you will have, for example, figure uh, minus two, so you can recognize that your distribution is quite flat. In comparison with some standard, we will uh, discuss about it uh, next time, uh, which is called standardized normal distribution. So standardized normal distribution usually have the kurtos has the kurtosis which is equal uh, to zero. One small statistical trick is that usually this formula is used with minus three to follow this logic that this standardized normal distribution is equal to zero. If this trick is not included, this will be three more than three and low than three. But let's take it as it is, uh, for example, implemented in SPSS in most of softwares. Yeah? Excuse me? Yeah, 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 there is mistypo, excuse me. Yeah, of course. Control plus C, control plus V in Microsoft Office tools. Yeah, excuse me, of course it's mistake. Yeah, you're right. Okay, and now uh, we should try to compute uh, kurtosis and skewness uh, for our data. And uh, once again, it would be nice uh, to have some comparison. So we will once again divide data for male and female and we will compare uh, kurtosis and skewness for these two groups uh, uh, for some variable. So, I would uh, propose to use the same variable as the last time we did. Uh, so, we will use the variable uh, B41A, which is about personal income. So, B41A. That's our variable. So the fifth column in our data file. And first of all, before the computation, and uh, if I do remember well, uh, we did uh, the same step uh, last time. So it's necessary to take into account that in our data are some values which are not very nice and would totally uh, make rubbish in our analysis. Uh, so, at least there are three values which should be omitted or excluded from our analysis. 
the first value, and you can see quite a lot of these values, are zeros. So it means these are people who are not economically active and they replied, okay, my personal income is zero. This is measured in check crowns uh, and this is net income for one month. So zeros should be excluded. Then there are also some strange values. You can see it, for example, here, six times nine And if we would like to know what does it mean from substantive point of view, so we can find the information, it's denied to answer. So no answer, actively denied. And there is one more code which is special and also shouldn't be included in our analysis, six times eight, which is don't know or no answer at all, but not active refusal. So these three values should be omitted before every computation to have correct results. So first of all, uh, we will define these values as missing values. So please go into variable view and to the fifth row, which is called B41A, and then column, which is called missing, we should find double click and please define discrete missing values. So you have to type zero, six times nine and six times eight or the order is arbitrary so you can change it. So you can take also zero, six times eight and then six times nine, it's up to you to decide. The order doesn't matter. Only what matters is to define all these values as missing values, so they will be omitted from all analysis. And the last step, click on OK. And now we can compute skewness and kurtosis for our data and first of all, before the computation, as it's always important in data analysis to at least expect some results before the computation, let's try uh, to include your knowledge into the expected results. So first of all, my question will be, if we have three possible pictures for skewness, so this one, this one, and the last one, so which picture, according to your opinion, will fit to the distribution of income data? This one, this one, or the last one? What will be, according to your knowledge, distribution of income in the Czech society, as well as in Germany, the US, doesn't matter, it will be all the same. But the question is, which of these pictures will fit to our data? This one, yeah? There is quite a lot of people with quite small uh, level of income and there are some people with extremely high income. Okay, yeah, that's true. Uh, but once again, it's quite nice to know before the computation about possible results and then you can, for example, find some mistake in your analysis if results doesn't fit your expectations. Okay, so that's uh, nice to know. And uh, before the computation, as I promised, we will divide our data uh, into male and female data file and we will analyze them uh, by splitting. So once again, if you like to divide your data by some variable, you can click here into this icon with two tables separated, which is called split file. Another option is to go into data, option and split file the third one from the bottom. <coughs> so splitting and we will divide our data by the first variable which is gender and for easy comparison I would propose choose the second option which is called compare groups. So let's move gender to the right window and then it's only necessary to click on OK and everything is prepared for us. 
to analyze data separately for male and female. You can check that here you can read split by B48. So all results will be separately for male and female. So that's it. And the next step is to compute skewness and kurtosis. Uh, there are at least uh, two options where we can find these uh, statistics. So I will show both of these. So first of all, if you will go into descriptive statistics and frequencies, and here statistics, so you can find skewness and kurtosis here. So once again, you go into analyze, Descriptive statistics, frequencies, and here the optional statistics include skewness and kurtosis. Not only, many other descriptive statistics, but skewness and kurtosis are also included. So check it. Uh, these two options continue. Then, of course, we have to select variable we would like to analyze. And it's once again the fifth variable in our data file, income B41A. And please only don't select display frequency tables as it would be quite long and boring to read. So don't check display frequency tables, which is default. So it's prepared and we can compute it. So here it is. And the table is organized very easily for us. The first part for male and the second part for female. And the first question which should be answered is whether we follow this zero plus or minus Qness for income variable for both groups, male and female. So it's very easy to see that our expectation we will have positive skewness, so it means picture like this one is followed in our data. Approximately 4 if you round down and approximately 2.5 if you round up slightly for male respectively female. So that's it. But we can answer also another question and this is the question whether data for male and female are skewed in the same manner or not. And you can see, if you compare these figures, that for male, the skewness is higher. What does it mean? It means very easily that there will be longer, so I will use, for example, blue one for male, so there will be longer and longer <coughs> tail on this right-hand side and approximately this distribution from male can be found. So that's Qness. And kurtosis, as you can see, is quite big one for both groups, but much bigger for male than female. So maybe our picture is not precise, so I will ch change it slightly. So maybe the picture will be something like this one, maybe. So that's Qness and Kurtosis, and we can compare it. There is also one trick, I think it's described in uh, Andy Field uh, book, mm -hmm. so I will show it uh, to you, which is related uh, to the standard error of Qness and standard error of Kurtosis. Uh, now, take it as it is, uh, then I will describe you more what is standard error. But the question can be, okay, in my data, it means in my data file, in my 1,000 people or 447 male and 407 uh, women, I can find skewness and kurtosis like this one. But the question can be, okay, is it really in the whole Czech population that skewness and kurtosis is like this one, or it can be zero, for example, in the population. So very simple test for this question is following. You will take the ratio of skewness and standard error of skewness. So it means 
for male, approximately 4 divided by approximately 0 0.1. So if you compute it in your head, so it's approximately 40. Yeah? For female, it's uh, 2.4 divided by 0 0.1 for uh, <coughs> simplicity, so it's approximately 24. And if this ratio will be outside of the range minus 2 till plus 2, then you have proven that your distribution is not symmetric, it is skewed. So if you make this ratio and the ratio is outside of the range minus 2 plus 2, it is not symmetrical distribution. Once again, I will explain you next time why minus 2 plus 2, uh, etc. Et and also the same question can be answered for kurtosis. The question can be, okay, in my data I can see kurtosis 26, but I have only part of the population. Can it be in the whole population that kurtosis is zero? So once again, take the ratio kurtosis divided by standard error of kurtosis for both cases. And once again, these are quite big figures. And if it is outside the range, minus two plus two, so you have proven that your data are not uh, <coughs> uh, as the same as standardized normal distribution with kurtosis zero. So these are very simple tests for population level of skewness and kurtosis. Once again, you will understand it more next time. We will discuss about it uh, next time about uh, this logic which is behind. So that's skewness, kurtosis, and how to use it for data analysis and for comparison of two groups. I would propose or advise to you every time you compute mean, standard deviation, skewness, kurtosis, let's compare your results with some other results to understand the real values. To see only one value and do not have any comparison is always misleading and uh, your interpretation can be wrong. Okay, so here you have only uh, discussion and uh, last uh, procedure we will go through and I will show you another procedure in which you can compute skewness and kurtosis is related to box plot. So, statisticians usually don't use classical charts such as bar chart, pie chart, line chart, uh, <coughs> scatter plot, etc. But they usually use some special charts. And I would say that the favorite for nearly all statisticians is called box plot. Why is it called box plot? And uh, what this box plot is about, I will explain you in a uh, following example. So let's go once again into a SPSS environment and uh, let's uh, now follow, analyze descriptive statistics and the third one option which is called explore. So analyze descriptive statistics and explore. So Once again, uh, we will use uh, the same variable, so income variable, and take it as a as dependent variable, so move it to the right upper window called dependent list. So that's the first step. This procedure by default will compute for you average or mean, median, uh, standard deviation, variance, uh, maximum, minimum, range, it means uh, difference between maximum and minimum, skewness and kurtosis by default. You can check that in statistics there is something that is called descriptives and all these computations are included. So you do not have to uh, check any special procedures, all is covered by default. And then there is uh, also option which is called plots. Oh, excuse me, it's 
and it's not covered here currently, I guess. Okay, so I will have to go into Char Builder, I guess, instead of it. Yeah, so excuse me, it's not covered in this procedure, so I will only show you results and then we will go into charts. So once again, income and uh, we will only uh, check uh, basic results. So if you click on OK, so you will see the table for male and female with quite a lot of descriptive statistics at once. So it's what is covered here. Yeah, it is covered. Uh, you can only uh, cannot uh, ask for it. Excuse me. So it's default, which you cannot change. So at the end, you can find box plots. Excuse me for mistake. And what does it mean and what is included here in this box plot? So the name itself, I think it's very easy to guess, originated uh, from this basic box which is included. So what is this box about? Why there is uh, some line inside and why there are some individual values outside uh, of uh, this basic range. So the logic of this plot is following. This line inside the box is the value of average or the mean. So this is the mean or average income for male and the second picture for female. Then the lower edge and upper edge of the box is created by something what is called uh, upper and lower quartile. Upper and lower quartile, what does it mean? It means, for example, this value, this bottom or lower edge, that one quarter, that's why it is called quartile, one quarter of all incomes are below this level. Upper quartile means that only one quarter of all income for all these uh, uh, men included in our survey have income higher than this level. So that's upper and lower quartile. Sometimes it is also called 75% and 25% quantile in general. So general we can also describe our data by something what is called quantile. It means some quantity which divides our data by some percentages. And the well-known, and I would say the favorite among statisticians are quartiles. So the lower quartile, upper quartile, and there is also something in the middle, which is median, as you know from previous discussion. So here are quartiles, and then there is some small part outside of this box and uh, this is computed very easily. This is 1.5 times big quantity of the length of this box. So you take this size and multiply it by one and a half and this is the length of this <coughs> extra lines or intersections and then there are some points outside from this range and usually we call these data outside from this range as outliers. So they are usually points which are strange that maybe there can be collected by mistake and they can influence our analysis quite a lot. For example, if we compute mean, so these quite big income levels will influence mean quite a lot. So we can see there are quite a lot of outliers here in this box plot. And if you can, for example, once again, try to <coughs> take a look for this box, so you can see that the line inside measuring uh, the average level 
is not totally symmetric. The first part is lower than the second part. And uh, you can very easily guess that the distribution according to this picture is not symmetric. That the skewness will be positive for this data as the mean is closer to the left. Okay, you can try to see box plot for female, so for the second part of our data, and you can recognize very easily that for example, but uh, uh, it's maybe slightly complicated as the access description is not the same, but you can uh, recognize that the average for female is lower than for male. You can also recognize that symmetry for female data is higher than for male data as well. And you can also recognize that extreme values or outliers for this part of the data, it means for women and for men, it's not comparable. There are more extreme values for male than for female. And of course now we can ask the question, okay, Shouldn't we omit, for example, these outliers or these extreme values from our analysis or not? That's the question. And you can solve it if you like uh, and you know it will help to your analysis. So that's box plot and uh, uh, it's description. So the next discussion but uh, we know quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of about it uh, should be devoted to missing values so sometimes or i would say that most of times in social science uh, statistics we can find data which we usually call system missing values it means we do not have any information in our data file. So, very easy example can be uh, here for the variable called B2. You can find points or commas here. So no information was present in original questionnaire or maybe more than one information. So you cannot enter any data. So if you do not enter any data into a SPSS environment, there will be space or uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> point or comma included. So that's something what is called system missing value and you cannot handle it. You do not know anything from the questionnaire usually. There are also other types of missing values and we know it from previous practicing uh, and these are called usually user missing values. So you have some information for example from questionnaire but you don't like to use it. So you decide actively you will not use some information from the data you have collected. Example is very easy from previous practicing. So for income, if we would like to compute average uh, uh, standard deviation skewness, kurtosis, we do not include zeros. It means people who are not economically active. There are practical reasons behind it. We do not include people who said, okay, excuse me, I will not tell you what's my income. Or people who were only silent and not responding at all. So these are user missing values and every time we have to decide whether to define some user missing values or not. Let's very easily check the impact of definition for missing values. So let's start with our data. Once again, we will go back uh, for income variable and let's for simplicity compute average income for male and female in our data. So we have many 
possibilities how to do it, but I would propose only to go into analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives. And uh, we can take income as the only one selected variable and click on OK. And I will save these results. So what is the average income for male and female according to our computation? So for male, so I will use uh, X average male, it is 11,450 uh, approximately, check rounds. For female, the average according to our data is approximately 7,711 check rounds, yeah? And these values seems correct also according to our knowledge about Czech society. Uh, and uh, now let's try to go back. It means not to define missing values and compute with all these rubbishes such as zero, six times eight, six times nine. So let's go back into uh, data file, uh, into variable view once again. And now let's change definition of missing values. It means we will choose the option no missing values at all. And the only necessary next step is once again to go analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives. SPSS is prepared for us once again to analyze income so no other steps are necessary. Click on OK and let's see results. So according to these results the average income for male is 125,292 and uh, for female it's uh, 112,400 68 approximately, if I round up. Let's compare these figures. This is approximately 10 times more, or even more, only caused by bad definition or no definition of missing values. So, please always be careful and define your missing values. If you do not define your missing values and they are present, some special values, it can influence your results quite a lot. Of course, this example is maybe extreme and you can recognize it only by uh, <coughs> uh, the practice that you only have a look at results. But if you do some more complicated analysis, you maybe will not recognize it, but your results will be totally rubbish if you do not define missing values. In uh, English, there is a well-known acronym, garbage in, garbage out. So, that's it. Okay, and now the next part will be devoted to data transformation. So we will learn how to prepare new variable from current variable or variables uh, which can be very useful for some data analysis. So, there are many procedures for data uh, transformation. Of course, not all of these procedures are covered by SPSS environment, but uh, most common procedures uh, which data analysts use quite often are following recording, computation of new variable and counting of occurrence of some values in the set of variables. So uh, today we will try to learn something about computation, uh, recording and uh, counting uh, of occurrences of some special values in data set. So 
let's start with recording. So I think that the name itself explains a lot. So if you have some coding scheme for your variable, you can change it by recording. There are two options in nearly all statistical software. So you can record and replace your original data, your original variable. But it's not a very wise strategy as you will lose your original information included in your data. So usually we prefer recording into new variable. So we will create some new column in our data, so it will be on the right side, and original information will be also stored in our data. And uh, I will show you two examples uh, for gender and educational level of uh, this recording uh, to have some knowledge how to prepare your data and transform your data by recording. So, Let's start with gender. For simplicity, it will be the easiest uh, way. If you look into our data, and you can recognize that the gender variable is coded uh, one is male and two is female, and we would like to change it. Okay, that's very easy. And uh, now only you have to propose what will be the change, what will be new coding of a gender variable. So some proposals. So I would propose to use codes only 0 and 1. And now the question is only what will be the code 0 and 1 used for. Hmm? So if there are more ladies here than gentlemen, so I would propose very easily 0 as male and 1 as female. Yeah? OK. So that's our new coding scheme and how to perform this transformation. So it's very easy to guess that you will find transform in the menu. So transform. And there are uh, the fourth and fifth option, recording into the same variable and recording into different variable. Once again, my strong recommendation is Never use recode into same variable every time you use recoding into different variable. But the dialog uh, which is following is nearly the same, of course. So let's recode into different variable or different variables. So first of all, you have to choose variable you would like to recode. So this is the first one, gender. Very easy. So let's move it to the right window. And then you can see some question tag. As PSS is asking you, okay, you would like to record B48, but what would be the technical name of new variable into which I should record? So here you can write it. So for example, for simplicity, I would propose to call this new variable as female, as it's quite very easy to guess that if variable is called female and it has zero as the value, it's not female. And you do not have to define individual value labels. So female can be the name. You can also save the label, not necessary here, if it is called female so you know what is it about. Of course, if you like to use another name, something like recommendation is, Use original name, such as B41, uh, 48, and then add some information that is recorded. So for example, B48 uh, and REC <coughs> can be added. And you know, okay, it's derived, recorded from B48. But here I would propose to call it only simply female. Okay, and only you have to define some assignments. So it means original coding was one and two. And now we would like to exchange it as zero and one. So here you have to click old and new values. 
and on the left side you define your original variable values on the right side you define values for the new variable for recorded variable so let's start one originally code for male will be zero for new variable and here click on add and the second assignment is code 2 should be changed into code 1 so you can see the second assignment click on continue here you have to click on change so no question tag will be here but new name which is called female and now it's possible to click on OK and the procedure is finished and if you see your data file there is new variable called female at the beginning all zeros as our data are sorted and then all ones as we have male and then all women in our data file. Any problems? Okay, I will check it. Yeah, what is the problem? Yeah, uh, you have a space. Oh. Space shouldn't be included or must not be included, I would say. Yeah, here it is correct, yeah? yeah okay. okay, click on okay. Oh, okay. And now I think it works. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Change. Change. It's necessary to click. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, that's recording, very easy recording uh, of only original two codes into two codes. Now, we will show example which is maybe more practical as usually through recording you also <coughs> uh, change uh, the number of categories usually you are merging some categories or sometimes we call it co-opsing of categories as you have quite a lot of categories in original variable and you would like to have only a uh, small number for the new variable so I will use a very simple example, one of the most practical, uh, which is related to educational level. So here it is, the third variable in our data file called highest education. And you can read, we have eight possible answers and also some DKNAs. And if you have eight possible answers and if you imagine uh, to analyze it, it's quite complicated as you have incomplete basic, basic, vocational, blah, 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 incomplete university, completed university, so quite a lot of categories. And for data analysis or statistical computation, it is not very nice to have so many categories. So now we have to find some logical assignments for these eight categories and to merge some of these categories uh, for new variable. So my proposal would be for example to merge first two categories incomplete basic and basic and usually as we discussed previously we use new code starting at 1. So new code 1 will replace code 1 and 2 for original variable. Then, of course, I uh, to understand uh, you are not fully compatible with Czech educational system, but I would propose to take vocational secondary without uh, a diploma together and uh, take it as the second category. So it will be basic and it will be secondary and for simplicity without a diploma. as it really matters in the Czech Republic whether you have state leaving exam or diploma or not. Then you can take category five, six, and maybe also seven, it's in completed university, so you do not have any special uh, diploma from university. And we can call it very simply only secondary education or secondary with diploma, it's up to. 
And the last one category, which should be a separated category, is eight completed university. So the first one, and I would call it, for example, tertiary education. And there are something more, such as DKNA, so these will be omitted for future analysis, so it doesn't matter what will be uh, <coughs> the next assignment. So let's take it and uh, let's learn how to do it, uh, how to define the range from one through two, from three to four, from five through six, seven, etc., etc. So if once again you will go into transform and recoding into different variables, So we have to change our previous dialog. So the easiest way is if you click on reset. And you will erase all your previous definition. And uh, take the third variable in our data file, highest education. So now we have to decide what will be technical name for new variable. So let's propose It should be short, ideally uh, maximum eight letters or figures. So for example, I would propose B8 recorded, yeah? Of course, if you like uh, to use uh, something that is maybe more helpful, you can use ADU or something like this one. It's up to you to decide. But here we should add some variable label, something like four categories of education. And remember, click on change. And now, and we will go uh, in very slow mode, uh, let's go into alt and new values. And let's define these assignments. So four times we have to define uh, some rules. So first of all, we would like to define one and two as one. So you can choose here range instead of value. On the left hand side, choose range and write one through two and new value which will be assigned to these original two codes is equal to one. And once again, click on it. The next rule is through three through four. So once again, the range. And new value will be coded as two. Once again, add this rule. The third rule is, once again, range starting at five through seven, and new value is coded as three. And the last one, so that's not range, that's individual value, so once again, we will change the option, so value, which is originally coded as eight, will be coded as four. And that's the last assignment. Of course now, maybe you can raise a question. Okay, and what about people with DKs and A's if there is no definition here? So by default, SPSS, if some category is omitted here in these rules, will prepare for you in new variable these not defined values as system missing. So you will find these commas. But there is no information in DKNA, so it doesn't matter. It will be system missing value. What is the value starting from the order? Excuse me? What is the value starting from the order? Like it's like a interpolation, right? Or you define like a value one and three into a value one. Yeah, not in order. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, do you understand? So yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, let's uh, just see uh, the <coughs> this approach. So for example, let's take, we will have uh, 10, 12, for example. 
So you would have to define two times. So 10 till, for example, 5, and then, for example, 12 to 5. Unfortunately not. If it is not uh, some series of values, you have to define it separately. I will only erase it. That's it. No, 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 no. So once again, once again, and it was one, two, so once again, one and two. It must be a sequence or you have to define separately. That's the only option. So. If you have all these rules defined, click on uh, continue. Only one may be uh, more uh, command. You can see you can also define range from minus infinity till some value. So it means lowest through values means from minus infinity. This range is from some value till plus infinity. And you can also define what to do with all other values for which no rules are defined. So you can, for example, actively copy old values, such as DKs and As, if you like. So you will click all other values, copy and add. So there are quite a lot of options, but we will not use it. So continue, click on OK. And here you can see, OK, we have data about education, we have codes one, two, three, four, and maybe some system missing values. Let's try to find some. Yeah, for example, here, the row 561 include uh, 88 in original, uh, 99, so it's blank. And the only missing information which should be added into our data should be to add value labels. As now we have prepared category 1, 2, 3, 4, of course currently we know it's basic, secondary, without secondary, base and tertiary education. But I can uh, say that next time everybody, uh, nobody will know what does it mean. So we will go into the last column and define values. So I will propose define 1 as uh, basic Etc. Etc. It's not necessary to type it uh, here and now, but only to know that if you prepare a new variable by recoding, you should define new value labels as well. And next time we will also discuss about necessity to check data whether our recording was correct or not. But uh, let's uh, postpone it to the next lecture. Okay. And the last procedure we will very quickly go through, as we do not have enough time, will be computation of new variable. So procedure which is called compute. So as you know that statistic is uh, quite related to mathematics, so we can use a lot of mathematical formulas and uh, mathematical approaches in statistics. So also statisticians sometimes uh, uh, use uh, some operations such as subtracting, dividing, multiplying, etc., etc. And uh, we can use this formula also for our variables. So if we have here, for example, uh, some data, so we can take these values and compute for them some results. So classical example which we will follow is uh, to compute H. As usually we don't ask by questionnaire how old are you? It's politically not correct. And maybe some ladies would refuse as it's not very polite. But we usually ask and no problem usually uh, can be found uh, what is <coughs> the year of birth. So it's B7 if I do remember well. Yeah, the second variable in our data file. Year of birth. And uh, usually we use very simple style of coding 
these two digits means last two digits. So it is 19 which is missing and these two digits uh, say about your birth. So our current data were collected in 1999. And our task is to compute age from these values. So we know that 1999, it was the year of data collection. And the question is, for example, if something said, okay, I was born in 44, how old was he or she? How to compute it? It's very easy, I guess. It would be 99 minus 44. So he or she was 55. Okay, so that's formula. And now let's apply this formula only in general way. So we will write some formula such as H is equal 99 minus and let's use B7 as the information about your birth. And if we apply this formula for all people only once, so there will be a new column variable called age with ages for all these people. There is more exception. You can see here, for example, on the 13th row, there is somebody with uh, 99 included. And there is some typo, I guess, as there is no definition that 99 means DK or NA. So then we have to check data and maybe uh, to change slightly our data. So let's go into computation. So once again, transform. And the first option is computing of new variable. And the dialogue is very easy to guess how to fulfill it. So first of all, you have to define our new variable which will be computed. Target variable it is called. So I would propose for simplicity to take H as our variable which will be computed from the year of birth. And then there is quite big, big window for your formulas. This formula is very, very simple. You can imagine, you can do much more magic than we do currently. But here we can type by keyboard or you can use this artificial keyboard. You can use also some special functions. We will uh, uh, see something more later. But now I will propose only to write 99 minus B7. If you do not remember technical name of your variable, you can take it here and move it uh, to the window. No problem at all. But this is the easiest way. And click on OK. And let's see, it works. You can see the age for the first, second, etc. respondent. Only there is some problem for a certain respondent, the age is zero. And as we know, all data are collected only for adults in ISSP. So we should go into variable view and define missing value for age. So there will be discrete missing value zero. As these people are adult people, but they refuse or were silent if they were <coughs> answering the question about their year of birth. So their age must be at least 18, but we don't know what is the age. So do not use it for your computation. So that's transformation and how to compute uh, variable. Okay, uh, we will discuss about counting uh, for the next, next time, but uh, please try uh, to follow, uh, excuse me, yeah, uh, try to follow uh, this uh, task. Uh, you can use for this homework uh, our data which we use uh, for lectures as well as I guess uh, that cardinal variables are nearly missing in your 
uh, data file for homework. It means UVS data. So let's try to describe one cardinal variable, mean, median, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis, compute and compare results uh, for male and female or other groups. It's up to you to divide data uh, only to have comparison for at least two groups. And next time, it's quite easy to guess uh, that uh, you will have assignments about recoding, computation, and counting, but uh, it should be uh, all uh, in one task, so I will not separate it. Okay, so that's your homework uh, for today, and only my uh, very uh, polite request about your homework. Uh, please try to interpret your results. Still, I have decided to give you maximum points if you, your computation is correct, but as it will be in the test, I will not only evaluate your results, but also interpretation, and the weight of interpretation is bigger in the test. So please try to interpret if you didn't interpret uh, previously. So try to say, okay, my data seems blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would uh, uh, try to discuss about this result, this result, this result. Yeah. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, enjoy uh, the bank holiday today, uh, tomorrow. Uh, enjoy uh, the week, uh, and next time uh, we will discuss more about uh, distributions and uh, data transformations. And if you like uh, to take uh, DVD with SPSS, uh, let's take it. Thanks a lot.